There are not nearly enough men here. Then it's fortunate the city guard doesn't take sentry assignment as seriously as you do. This bodes well. <laughs> I'll be a first. This may not be such a terrible plan after all. And what exactly is that supposed to mean? Only that your last secret shortcut was nowhere near as secret as you claimed. Ah, yeah, but that's half the fun of it. Life's too short for perfect plans. You want a plan that'll keep you on your toes, stop you growing old and complacent. Worked for you, has it? Clive, my boy. Even life's smallest challenges offer the opportunity to grow and to change. You must embrace these moments. Allow them to suffuse your heart with a deep sense of fulfillment. <sighs> Narrowly escaping death at the hands of an enemy is not my idea of fulfillment. Hmm. Something wrong? Not at all. Just wondering if the two of you had finished. Right. We make for the Mother Crystal's heart as planned. Destroy it and the whole thing should come tumbling down. And if the passage to the Inner Sanctum is guarded? Then we embrace the moment and use it to grow and change. Come on, this way. Try to stay out of sight. Obviously. The passage is empty. So we've arrived here, I guess, with the intention of destroying the Mother Crystal. But, you know, I don't know how you're going to go and do that. Because this thing, you can see it on the world map. It's fucking gigantic. What are you going to do? Even though all three of you are dominance and all three of you have these icons you can transform into. And two of the three of them are actually quite large. Not nearly the size of this crystal. And plus, you'd think that if it was possible to destroy these things, perhaps it would have been done by now. Like, I would consider, considering these, um, these different kingdoms and empires have been warring with each other forever, that it would be considered a strategic goal to take out the Mother Crystal, or at least deny their access to it. But destroying it would be easier than capturing it, I figure. Somebody would have done it by now if it were so possible. <laughs> but, you know, here we are. It's a video game, so... <laughs> Maybe there's something I'm not understanding. So, I, I'd mentioned at the end of the last episode that I had gone and reached the end. Like, so the way I play this for this playthrough is I'm playing through it blind. Playing through it on my PS5, capturing the video, then copying it over to my PC so I can do the commentary. Now, I would have liked, and I tried, doing a live commentary with this using the PS5 to record the audio of my voice, but, you know, it didn't mix properly and sounded terrible. And I ended up having to do it this way. Which means I end up recording a couple of episodes in advance before I go and I record my commentary. Record the gameplay of a couple episodes in advance. So I try not to go too far with it because I don't want to uh, know what's coming when I'm talking about it. And, well, I kind of fell off of the game for a while because I was playing this game quite a bit and I got up to the last episode that you had watched. But then I got distracted from it and that distraction was called Baldur's Gate 3. I'm done with that game and then I got distracted with, uh, like, some other stuff like Resident Evil 4 and all Although that. good things must come to an end. We might have a bit more company from now on. So, I'm finally getting myself back to this game, and I'm going to stick through this, especially since I consider myself needing to get through this game prior to the release of the second part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, what was it called? Rebirth? Yeah, because that's coming out in, like, 20 days, or something like that. So, maybe a little more than 20 days. I don't know. At the end of the month, 29. So, I'm going to push through and get everything recorded for this. It also means that I'm going to try to put, pay more attention to how I'm progressing through it. So I'm only going to record, try anyway, to record one episode at a time, gameplay, then record the commentary, then go back to playing. Be 
the moment I was talking about earlier. What have we here? More insects come to be squashed? You will find my mortar and I only too happy to oblige. To the talker. Then let's shut him up. So we got a boss battle here. <laughs> this big bastard with a gigantic cannon. How the hell could anybody be that strong? I mean, even like Cloud's Buster Sword isn't quite as ridiculous as this. <laughs> Whatever, it's a video game. I mean, I'm talking about the logic of something where I'm playing as a character who has a tendency to turn into a gigantic fire monster. Anyway, because I had stopped playing this game for quite a few months, I've sort of forgot how <laughs> to play the game. So you're going to see my actual like ability to play the game, but the combat... My ability to control the character and dodge and all that kind of stuff take a significant hit compared to the earlier episodes. <laughs> anyway, I'll get through this. I do end up dying. I'll cut, I'll cut out the footage of me dying so you won't have to watch it. But it'll be obvious when I do it. So it's not revealed yet, but there is something strange about this guy. And we're about to see it in a minute or so once we finish the first phase of this fight. It is a little irritating that the game... Well, not irritating. I guess it has to exist this way for gameplay purposes. But your character's companion characters are... And I have three of them at this point, which is something I didn't think was going to happen. But your companion characters don't seem to ever be targeted by enemies, or at least not targeted in the same way I am. Like, this guy is exclusively throwing attacks at Clive. Now, he has some AoE moves and stuff like that, which will hit the other characters, but he doesn't stop and focus on them. He's attacking nothing but Clive. And that's because I think that the other companion characters there have no, like, HP matter meters. So, they can take all the damage in the world. They're not going to go down. But they also deal very little in the way of damage. They're not particularly aggressive. I think their attacks probably don't do much or maybe even any damage. So, he just attacked and, like, no damage. <laughs> I think there, may, there might just be set decoration, you know? I do think that the extra characters do need to be there for the sake of... Uh, story progression, because Clive is not the most talkative individual, and he tends to brood a lot. So not having somebody else there to bounce ideas off of him and, and interact with other people and all that kind of stuff does kind of limit the expression of the story. But, you know, it is what it is. See, there's the jump cut, because <laughs> I died. In Akashic, I think that's how he pronounced it. Don't quite know what that is. I'm sure if, if, like, if I jumped in the menu or whatever and found my way to the appendix, I could find something, but considering he's a soldier, you'd think that perhaps he's just, like... Hmm. Something like a kind of genetic engineering kind of thing. Somebody, uh, perhaps a bearer who was taken and experimented on or something was done to them to sort of integrate more magic into their body to make them better soldiers. But also, it seems to drive them insane. <laughs> so perhaps it's not a reasonable thing. He had seen stuff like this in Final Fantasy before. I mean, hell, um, the whole concept of soldier in Final Fantasy VII were people who were either injected with Genova cells or people who were at very least exposed to a lot of Mako, which like changed the color of their eyes. And that somehow, I guess, would have made them better fighters. But in eight, Final Fantasy VIII, your characters, uh, your seeds, uh, Squall and whatnot, were all people who, not maybe, maybe not quite as invasively as this guy, <laughs> all had their 
themselves modified for the sake of being better fighters, the whole Guardian Force thing. It messed with their heads, it, it erased their memories, it fucked them up pretty bad. But it was considered, even by them, to be worth it for the sake of the benefit that the Guardian Force provided to them. This guy, I would assume, we're not going to be on the same end of the moral spectrum when we're determining how good of a thing it is. It's weird Jill standing there when he staggered. So, like, in, in Final Fantasy VIII, you're going to look at it and go, well, like, well, it's a bad thing because it screws the person up, it erases their memories, but we need to do it for the sake of the greater good. But now we're in this game where somebody's getting modified and it fucks them up pretty bad. And, like, oh, well, no, that's that's just evil. <laughs> now, of course, I, I did say that there is a difference. I mean, plus a willingness of the individual to do it to themselves. I Like, in, in 8, the characters were made aware that the use of a Guardian Force could result in memory loss, although they were told that that was a lie. And they were essentially forced to do it anyway. But by the time they became truly aware of the negative aspects and negative side effects of using a Guardian Force, they had determined for themselves that they had to keep using it. It wasn't optional. They they needed to in order to continue their fight. I'm going to suspect that these people are not so willing. Or perhaps even even if they were, I don't know. They're, they're, they're the antagonists and maybe they're doing something for evil reasons. So maybe even if this guy volunteered for it, being a true believer in the greater good of the Empire, whatever the hell, some Sambuk, Sambuka, Sambreak, something like that. If he was a true believer, well, he is perhaps just too messed up to really understand what he did at this point, because it definitely does seem to be that this Akashic thing just turns a person insane. <laughs> Perhaps he didn't know what he was going to be giving up. He's almost dead. Down he goes. Or no, he was still a man. A man who drowned in ether. It's no way for anyone to go. Come on. God, duty's a death sentence in this place. Not that Sylvester cares. All right, well, that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, I got to go shut it off and play the next part. <laughs> Thanks for watching.